the home of the common Joe and the common Sally in the know, even more so than all those media talking heads. The aura of positivity that continues to surround the Oklahoma program to me is just amazing. As the season rolls on, we go into week two now, they're probably going to take on a little bit tougher of an opponent than they had last week. But they did what they were supposed to do last week, unlike some other teams we'll mention later. And the recruiting just keeps steamrolling as they are in the hunt, it seems like, for a couple of big-name recruits. And I think maybe even had one that committed to them. Let's talk about it. Rising up straight to the top, it's the Oklahoma Sooners. That's right, just like that old song by Survivor, Eye of the Tiger. It seems like Oklahoma continues to rise in everything this week. They rose in the poll up to number 18. They did do what they were supposed to do against Arkansas State. Hell, they even had Butch Jones over about to cry. We all know he's unstable a little bit. and He said that loss was... When he was a Tennessee, that lost to Oklahoma when he was a Tennessee, still haunts him. So y'all might be about to cost that man his job again. And now on top of that, the recruiting just keeps steamrolling. But before we get to all that, this is the Outlaw of College Football, and here they come right in. Once again, it's the Outlaw Posse. Now, in effect, in today's Four Horsemen shout-outs, as promised for those with those Four Horsemen badges, are Dale Sint. T7, Rick 13, Heath, Stokes, and Kuz's Corner have their badger deputized. They're ready to go. They're going to help me with this college football invasion today. Also, we had some donors to the show. Stink Ass Cat with a $10 donation to the live stream, as well as Michael Parks. And if you want to get your deputy badge and you want to get deputized and be a part of the Outlaw Posse and get your random four horsemen shout out, as well as the comment of the day, possibility which is coming right now all you gotta do is hit that join button next to the subscribe button it's not for 2.99 a month 75 cents a week you get your badge and you'll be deputized and the deputy badge input comment of the day goes as follows it's from rich castle and rich castle says dude your stance on the horns up down penalty is spot on either lose the horns down penalty or penalize for horns up as well Completely agree, Rich. Now, I could also be reached on Twitter at OCF Productions. Now, getting right to it here. <laughs> Oklahoma. <laughs> you know, I try not to do so many Oklahoma videos, but these their fans, as some of these recruits pointed out, um, they're pretty supportive. They're pretty crazy good. Not a bad crazy, but a crazy good kind of deal. Um, seems like uh, Oklahoma is in on some pretty big recruits. Danny Okoye, who is considered one of the best uh, edge rushers in the nation right now, he's a four-star edge rusher out of Oklahoma, had his visit to Oklahoma this past week and said that he has now narrowed it down to just three teams after that visit. Now, the teams that he was considering uh, were as follows, Oklahoma, Alabama, Georgia, LSU, Michigan State, Notre Dame, Ohio State, Oregon, Tennessee, and Texas. So that's some elite company, and all of a sudden he narrows it down to three after his visit to Oklahoma. Now, negative Nancy might say, well, he might have not had a good visit and kicked Oklahoma out and got down to his final three, but we all know that's probably not the case. That's just wishful thinking by those Oklahoma haters out there. And before I started doing this podcasting stuff, I never realized how many people actually dislike Oklahoma, sort of. Feels like another team I know. I think it's my, maybe the team I root for. <laughs> the Alabama Crimson Tide. Now, also, Andy Bass, uh, who's basically an athlete out of Heritage Hall High School in Oklahoma, had 400 total yards of offense and accounted for 
or was associated with six touchdowns in the very first game of the year for Oklahoma. He's ranked the 11th overall player in the state of Oklahoma. Now, he's playing the quarterback position, Andy Bass is, but he's not going to be a quarterback in high school. So he's not going to be really highly ranked as a quarterback per se, but as far as an athlete goes, he is considered one of the best all-around athletes in the nation. And so they're probably going to bring him in and, and put him in a number, number of different packages for Oklahoma. Jeff Levy will definitely be able to use him in a lot of good ways. Let me rewind back to something that I was talking about, about the Oklahoma victory over at Arkansas State, that some of the haters that do not like Oklahoma too much continue to try to take away from it by saying, well, it was Arkansas State. But they did what they were supposed to do. I say it ad nauseum, but it's something that you need to realize because teams like Baylor – didn't take care of business, and they got beat by double digits by Texas State. Clemson got beat by Duke by 21 points, and Texas Tech was upset by Wyoming. All these teams are teams that you should not be getting beat by if you are those teams. Oklahoma did what they were supposed to do. So all the crying and, and gnashing of teeth, I just uh, sounds like y'all uh, – Sounds like y'all up in your feelings just a little bit. So the haters, y'all need to just sit down. And the Oklahoma fans out there that are being negative Nancy's, y'all need to be grateful for what you got right now. I mean, because it could have been a lot worse. <laughs> just ask Baylor. <laughs> but the SMU game coming up, I would like to talk about and touch on it for a second. I know everybody maybe considers it a layup game, but I don't know if that's so much going to be the case. And I don't want people coming here and losing their bowels and getting pissed off when Oklahoma doesn't beat SMU 73-0. Because SMU actually looked pretty good against Louisiana Tech. Yes, I know it's Louisiana, Louisiana Tech, but the score is not really indicative of how SMU dominated that game. SMU was up 31 to nothing at halftime. The game ended up 38-14. to So it looks like an ass-whooping, but not a an epic ass-whooping. But if you go by one half alone, 31 to nothing is pretty – Large for SMU. Uh, normally, a team like Louisiana Tech would give SMU trouble on up into the early part of the fourth quarter, maybe even beat SMU in the past. I think SMU joined the ACC. has got them a little bit of a fire, a little stoke, and uh, they're a little fired up to prove themselves. And now they're on a big stage with Oklahoma, and they can actually do that. we got a few little nuggets here that you Oklahoma fans may want to keep an eye on so you don't get so aggravated if SMU does give you all a little trouble for the first three quarters or so. L.J. Johnson, who is the running back for SMU, had 128 yards on 14 carries for a touchdown. Their quarterback, Stone, for SMU, had 23 of 37 for 248 yards and three touchdowns. So uh, they're no slouch. It's going to give the defense a little bit of a test. I like the way it incrementally goes up. Although this week was supposed to be the week that Oklahoma played Georgia. Now, I can't remember where that game was scheduled for Athens or Norman, but it would have been epic. If Oklahoma has been playing Georgia this week and Texas and Alabama. We could have gotten a real good sample of maybe what's to come in the future for the SEC, but that game didn't happen. But just, just to sit here and think about it happening in the same week Alabama and Texas happened, it would be for some pretty good stuff. Uh, for college football fans out there. Now, Oklahoma's schedule gets a little bit easier next week, in my opinion. Tulsa people may not like that. Courtney may not like that. <laughs> He's one of our loyal listeners. Oklahoma plays Tulsa the following week. I hear that game is a hard sellout. And then they got a week off. And then they play Iowa State and Texas back-to-back. -back. Um, that week off is a little odd to me. I always thought that um, Oklahoma had a week off before Texas. But let's see, it says here on the schedule that they actually play Iowa State right before Texas and don't have the week off before Texas this year. I'm not sure if I'm really a big fan of that. I would rather see Oklahoma after playing those three moderately easy games other than SMU maybe. I would like to see them con to continue playing to get that, that continuity going and test themselves against Iowa State after the Tulsa game and then have the week off and get ready for Texas, but that don't seem to be the case here. So, as far as the prediction goes for the SMU game, people have been asking me to do that as well. I think that SMU will give y'all a little bit of a test. They may test your defense just a little bit. Y'all may not score 73 points this week, 
maybe somewhere in the range of 35 to 45 points maybe on SMU. SMU may be able to put up between 14 and 21. I'm not sure about that. I'm sort of back and forth on that a little bit. So I'm going to go with Oklahoma 42 and SMU 17. That's my prediction. You guys and gals drop in the comment section. Tell me what you think about all this. Like, share, comment, and subscribe to this channel as usual. Also, there's a heart down here with a with a money dollar sign in the middle. If you want to give a one-time donation to the show, just hit that. Throw a few dollars in the coffers. Also, like I said before, you can join the Outlaw Posse if you want to. Um, get your uh, random Four Horsemen shout-out. Get your badge. Get deputized. Maybe even be the comment of the day like Rich Castle was today. It's not but $2.99 month, 75 cents a week if you're on Apple phone. You may have a good laptop or a computer because it doesn't mesh with YouTube memberships for whatever reason. I'll also drop my cash out in the description of this video, which is Money Sign JPC 316. And I'm out of here. KMCA, all the other teams, class is now officially dismissed.